Feature Friday. The freshest. <sighs> Okay, so you guys sent this through quite a lot actually and you like us to check out some of these vocalists that are so known for uh, their Bollywood tracks and stuff and uh, now we're gonna get a chance to see them and the raw vocals with no auto-tune, no post-production, no extra added pizzazz from the engineers. So we're gonna have a look and see what comes up. Right? Yeah, we've done this with different industries. So yes. It's always quite interesting. Go on, let's have a look. Let's it's more, look. I, yeah, I mean some of these singers that they like the names, like I see like Shreya and Arjit, it's like... Palak, some of them, I mean, they probably never use pitch correction, but they definitely do use post-production in those fucking tracks. Yes, yes, so let's yes. give it a watch. And it, it's, all, it's always dependent on what the track requires, right? So like what type of cinematics they're looking for, but yeah. Let's have a look. There's many versions of this video as well, okay. I, I'd imagine. Indian singer's real voice. <laughs> auto-tune versus no auto-tune. Part two. Nice. I love these videos. Oh, <laughs> Oh, so that it's really simple to me. It's really simple to me that what they're looking for in that specific track is that sound. It's a different sound. Yeah. It's not. It's not what. It's not a case of like, oh, we gotta fix the vocals or we gotta add some extra something. Because there, there is that mentality behind autotune, right? Like most people think that when autotune is being used, the only reason why autotune might be used is because that person might be a shit singer. Yeah, but in that's not it. But in reality, there's many occasions in which autotune is actually a really useful tool. The problem is there are definitely singers. The vibe. Yeah, there are definitely singers out there, and you and I can probably name a few in the comments um, <laughs> that abuse the shit out of that tool. Is the tool, and it, and it shouldn't be the end or be all. Um, or but, a primary aspect of making music overall, but it is a trendy sound. So, it, especially the tracks with like this, that fucking thing. Exactly. I mean, of course, you're gonna try and use if you're gonna try to make a hit. You're going to try and use that, uh, you know, that kind of the auto pitch. That, I know when thing. people that, that things that people already correlate in uh, auditory, uh, uh, auditory speaking to a hit song. True. So, so again, it's, it's not a lack of talent would or I be the, capability. Yeah. Would we be the biggest fans of that song? Maybe not. Maybe yes. Who knows? But, but it's a really good pr uh, putting in perspective what type of things you can bring into the table with this type of tools. No, I think what's most important is that that, that isn't a, that isn't a, testament to how good of a singer he is correct because obviously in the live in the in the raw one he's actually a decent singer he's a really good singer Pretty good. yeah and he has the charm that then would translate would you can elongate you can equalize correctly and things like that yeah. and he would become sort of like a hit song so and it's very hard to make hit songs anyways go on Crazy. people say like oh you made a hit billion views or, or hundreds of millions of views is like it's easy it's like what the fuck so difficult it's not it doesn't yeah. matter what part of the world it's mental is. and yeah. it's like the stars have to align it's just <laughs> yeah. it's insane go yeah on. And actually, if you think about it, the quality of the vocals in from raw to studio really st stable, yeah. still maintain. I like. I've heard of it off camera. For our songs. Insanely sweet. It's very breathy. She can put you to sleep. That's a lullaby right there. Yeah, right, so, that's what I saw. So. Okay, so we probably should. Beautiful. We probably should make the, I guess, amendment that isn't auto tune. I think perhaps what these videos sometimes, uh, what well, some of these videos sometimes get wrong. I know, you know, no shade to sort of creators, but equalization and post production are not auto tune. That that auto tune is a specific tools tool set, yeah. right? Um, but I, I think most people know it behind the a, a, a studio as pitch correction. That's what people sort of recognize. They, when you go like, ah, and then it goes, ah, it goes, ah, <laughs> and you're like, it just tries to fix the fuck out of you, right? Yes. The undulations, everything, it tries to narrow everything down. Um, but what you heard there, so pull it back and listen to her actual voice. Yeah. 
The pause. Dry. The dry. There's no reverb. There is. There isn't any amplification of of the low end, of the mids, of the highs. Because at the moment, where you get these fucking cameras, where they catch it just highs for some fucking reason, they never catch any low end, so it never sounds resonant. It never sounds like holy shit. You know what I mean? It never sounds like a like, what like a cinematic piece. Yes. Um. So one of the things that they do do in in some of these uh, Indian movie scenes, in which we've kind of reviewed a little bit of. What we notice is that they really do amplify both reverb, elongation of notes, and the low end is amazing. It's like one of my favorite things about the indie music industry. What I actually really like about this particular take in this song is that the vocals come so forward in the track, right? So the main focus is the sweetness. The main focus is the amplification of that uh, subtle, like, uh, a lullaby effect that she naturally possesses. So in this particular post-produced uh, post uh, sound that we're hearing, it's actually like an uh, like an enhancing of her natural elements. So there's really no much added pizzazz, uh, technically speaking, to what she can do in studio. Yep. High reverb, bringing that brightness that she naturally has. Well, those are pretty true to the take. Yeah. yeah, pretty true to the take in studio. You see that beginning of that singing phrase, how amplified the breathiness has become, For and I think that's one of her one. That's one of her catch. Uh, the the catchy things about her vocal texture is that she's so breathy, so they really amplify those moments in in the singing phrase. We're not that familiar with Palak Muchal's no, work. Not at all. However, based on this and given her sort of texture and texture of singing, we yeah. would presume. I have heard, I think, one song of her bef uh, behind uh, behind behind cameras, off camera. <laughs> um, so just given based on that experience, I would imagine that this is sort of the sound that she does has become notorious for. Ooh. Oh, first time. So dry, that environment. Stunning. She's Stunning. unreal. Let's talk about that. That was absolutely gorgeous. There's nothing harder than singing in a radio station. I'm gonna radio live like by environment. that. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna live by that statement till the day I die because there's no natural reverb. There, Those microphones are not made for picking up singing. So they dry you out like there's no tomorrow. The environment's already dry. There's no resonance. There is, it's all about the speech. So all the plosives become very forward. All the S's and T's, they just become amplified. So it it's kind of sharpens the the ugly edges of singing. So it's one of the hardest things to actually get right. Um, and when you get clips like these, where it's it's the most natural-like environment, is one of like the rawest places that you could put a singer into. They and they manage to sound this great. Uh, you got something out of this world happening. They also something mad about the videos. Like she she doesn't have any. Um... She has no feedback. She she no. doesn't have any headphones. She doesn't have nothing. No. So and in those type of environment, because those those uh, sort of microphones are made for speech, obviously, because it's a fucking radio station. Um, <laughs> how the fuck does she know if she's? I don't think she does. I think she's singing with the just with feel by and feel. Feeling. That's yeah. unbelievable. Go on, let's That's see incredible. the actual thing. That's really good. That's what we love acoustics. <laughs> Like there's no I fucking love this song. Me <laughs> too. <laughs> Also, let's have a moment for the fact that these artists in India do these acapella videos for fun. He, he, that is something that is commendable. What? It, 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 it happens in other parts of the world, but it happens very rarely in the West. And that's acapella why... Acapella videos. Where they just sort of like that. Because I think there's also this idea of... Um, 
yeah, like image protection. Maybe, you know, maybe it's a shit video, but you thought it was good and then people roast the crap out of it and then that might hurt ticket sales and stuff. But then you have people like on TikTok at the moment, like the Charlies, uh, the Puths and all these other motherfuckers um, that do like creating videos like that yes. because they're so confident in their ability to do yes. things and then they become famous for that. People are like, oh, wow, that's so oh impressive. But in other industries... India being one of them. India, uh, Philippines, but Indonesia. They have always done that. Japan, it's like you have to prove that that's your fucking voice. Go to first take in Japan. Yeah. You know, go to the Coke studios. Sing your fucking heart out. Go uh, in the middle of a reality show. Hey, here's a mic. Sing. Sing. You know what I mean? Sing. In the life. Philippines. You want to sing live in TV? We give you nothing, no help, no fucking nothing. Yeah, and we gave you the song an hour and before. It's live, and by it's the way. Live, live. It's like, holy. F in Malaysia, it's like, so you want to sing yeah. a song? Well, choose. It has to be one of the most explicit and explicit, explicit vocally speaking, and um, difficult songs you can come up with in a live environment. We'll give you an orchestra. We won't give you anything else. Yeah. No, no help on anything else. And it's like, oh fuck me. Okay. Oh look, what time it is. <laughs> time to shit my pants. Time. Look at that. But anyways, I, I genuinely like Neha a lot. Um, I I think it, essentially I think what the conversation is in the community sometimes is that because she's make hits yeah. that are hits, pop hits, and I don't like pop. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, and ballet isn't the biggest pop fan either. Uh, I guess really. when you make those type of, well, that type of music, and you become notorious for it, there is the misconception as well that that's the only thing you can do. But I genuinely think she's a really nice singer to listen to. I actually think she's very versatile. Yeah, and I yeah. Think that is a commendable in so many ways. Like I, the first thing that we were ever exposed to Neha's was to Neha was her uh, romantic acoustic medley that she did in one of their studios. And to me, that put her on a really high pedestal because it's hard to it's class. to make it work that way, right? Yeah. Again, it, I I like her. <laughs> Literally, Again. the only difference is the reverb, and it's just really well equalized. It's just really well equalized. Yeah, Shreya is fucking ridiculous. Ah, uh, Shreya doesn't even count. Look at her hair, she looks perfect. You see, that's what I'm talking about in a reality show. Oh my god, she's stupid good! Ironically enough, she I sounds better. I like the real version. Yeah, literally. However, this is the most, uh, this is the best environment we've seen in any of his videos. <laughs> like the audio yeah, wise, correct. she is in the best environment. Uh, also, out also, of everyone else. you are seeing a mixed, yeah, that was mixed version. Look, in we, this clip, we all know how good Shreya Goshao is, and we know how good everyone else was. Um, at the level that Shreya is at, it's like I don't think there's any doubt that she's truly a, an elite singer. Um, but this, uh, that that show, uh, I think it's, it's Indian it's, Idol, it's right? Indian Idol. Uh, I think. Yeah, they mix the fuck out of everything. Oh, um, believe there is, me, there's post production in in that clip. Everywhere in the world, there is one clip, however, um, that she did something a cappella with Sonu. Oh yeah. And someone else, and it was just fucking random. No one knew about it. It happened, I think, in X Factor, or maybe it might have been Indian Idol. I think I'm not it was sure. in Indian Idol. Still, yeah. And they were using the mics to speak, not not a a a not a handheld. Not a handheld and uh, holy shit! Yeah. What the fuck? But it, it's it, it's interesting though again because in this particular clip, uh, it goes through post production before they air it in TV. Hell so yeah. <laughs> so these moments are like a little bit a little bit enhanced. So they cool put shit. reverb, but they it's they music, add yeah it's environmental shit. So you know they're no the track might have been playing in the actual place. The track might have been playing for her to sing along to it. Yeah, but that, that's been but, equalized in a different channel. Yes, it has definitely been post production. Like, there's post production there. But, but, but to be completely honest, I prefer that version to the version in the studio. She's someone, she's someone, that's crazy. She's someone we have to look uh, watch live. Yeah, she's yeah, really yeah. intriguing because she's very enigmatic to me. And I think to someone who understands uh, voice in, to your extent, 
I think she's probably just as enigmatic because I don't know how oh, the I fuck. Oh, I would love to watch her live. Yeah, go on. Yeah. Oh, she's got a wad of cash. Oh, but I like this version though as well. Another that. See how much it projects. He's not even trying, bro. He ain't even trying. Very rare to see that happen ever, right? It's very rare to see a singer breathing through the nose. Why? Because it's easier to just let the diaphragm drop. So you let you let the so you breathe through the mouth because it's easier to just let the the diaphragm drop. When you breathe through the nose, is because you don't want to shift anything within you. And we know then that in Indian classical. And the a lot of the time, the larynx don't shift as much. They're pretty static compared to the Western singing technique. But that also means that the diaphragm doesn't need to uh, distend itself either. So that may, that's why maybe they're more, much more efficient in their breath economy in comparison it's to Western held, singers. It's all held. It's all economically redistributed. Tit. Tit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I understand. I understand. You know, so I that, don't know, but, but that's that, such a interesting thing that might make more sense then because well maybe that he doesn't well, I didn't clock that when we watched him live at Wembley and he didn't do it I don't think he did it because I would have to be fair, definitely would have noticed to be fair we though, were so close yeah we were really close but also I was so fucking mesmerised please plug clip I was so <laughs> mesmerised I was just sort of looking at him and I was just like what the fuck this is like the highest it's still to this day the best concert I've been to in terms of level of music um because obviously it's also a live music and he had live musicians and stuff. Um, and he was very fatigued when we watched him live. Yes. That, maybe that's something that we didn't make apparent on the on the review of the concert. He was fatigued as fuck. He had just been performing the night before. His voice wasn't fresh. Ooh, the traveling, it's, it's, it's a, that's yeah. a real deal. He was not fresh and he performed like four hours. Without a break. Without a fucking break. Without that guy, a break. He's inhumane, bro. He didn't even sound tired towards the end of it. Like, the same fatigue that we heard at the beginning? Was the same fatigue you heard like, at the end. And, I'm, and we, mean fa we mean fatigue, not that it's like he, he's all sound like that. It's just... the, vo the Again, you could, it, when you n know vocal textures, especially when you're familiar with the artist, you're able to... To hear the uh, that there's a little bit more effort being in in in, in, in exerted yeah. for the singing phrases itself. Yeah, more a bit tiny bit more croaky than usual. Exactly, or or a little bit more of a of a darker edge to the uh, brightness of the tonality itself. It's a little bit dimmer, but the quality, the fact that it maintained that that same level throughout the whole show yeah. without a break. I think he took a sip of water like twice throughout the whole thing, and I'm like. M mental that's absolutely ridiculous. insane it's insane ridiculous but anyways yeah yeah so th that's an interesting choice again see that was a full body breath Love this man's voice, man. Just making it more cinematic. <laughs> Adding continuity to the phrases. Obviously, you cut out the breaths. <laughs> You know what? That's awesome. This I like is, this video. Th this is some really interesting videos because there, there, there are more versions. There's, there's one where Jubin is in it, where like Renuka is in it, where B. Prak is in it. Um, so, that, you know, if you'd like us to check out more versions of this, I think it does spark interesting conversation. Mm. And perhaps it does uh, allow us to speak about things uh, in, you know, perhaps in a more technical manner. Um, because there, there are some huge misconceptions on, like that was in autotune. None of these people actually had autotune on. Uh, only um, the first guy, and he did it for uh, vibe-like uh, purposes. It wasn't. Yeah, it was because he couldn't sing. Exactly. But, but also, um, yeah, it's funny. I, I think the person I, I, I heard speak about it the best, ironically enough, and he's he's an adamant user of it, even in life, was Tory Lanez. 
um, you know, who's made music with Diljit uh, Dosanj. Mm-hmm. Um, and he speaks about it very clearly. He's actually not a bad singer at all. He, he's a really, really good singer. Um, not really, really good, but he's a good singer. And because um, there's just there's just levels to the game, you know what I mean? They're, they're, and and I'm sure he'll agree. But you can use it as a tool to create a sound that no one else has. T Pain was also a great example of this. Correct. It's probably the best example of it. And people like Tory Lanez, are, you know, <laughs> came came through with things like that. And the idea, the ideology changed. But it wasn't that you couldn't sing if you used auto tune. Uh, it just happened that then in the pop industry, what seemed to happen was you could generate a fucking you, you went the McDonald's route. So you could create cheeseburgers and then make it the most famous burger in the world yeah. because it's easy to produce. It just requires a look. It just requires a sound that then you can There's fucking... Somebody who can carry the, the, the image, the, what yeah. they're trying to sell. And that shit started happening in 2000s. Mm-hmm. And then the r and I'm I'm so glad it was the R&B lads that then took it and kind of switched, you know, shifted the, the perception about it. Um, but in the pop, it hasn't changed. You can tell. Like, most mm-hmm. people, when they think, like, auto-tune... It does. She had, they had auto tune in live. So it's like most people that when they perform live don't have auto tune on. They're just fucking layered so well yeah. that you can't even tell when they're singing and when there's a track on where there is backing vocally singing. Yeah, it yeah, just yeah, sounds yeah. like one. And then their mic is on. Yes, they are singing live, but the percentage of the mic is was altered. Yes. Um. But yeah. So I. It, it's really interesting to speak about this. Uh. Yeah. But let us know your thoughts. Again. I know. I know it's quite iffy stuff. Um, I quite I quite like talking about this stuff because you can you can also get to appreciate your favorite artists the real ones, for, yeah, for what they what they really are good at and I I love that you can find also this like a cappella versions of the songs which is such a rare like environment it's what we love the most actually. yeah we love, I love that we love acoustic live or mm. raw more than anything else studio versions yeah and you guys know that so let thank us know thank you thank you for that suggestion <laughs> let us know if you like us to check out more videos and which ones and goodbye.